In the early 1960s, China's aviation industry was in its infancy and was in dire need of upgrading its fighter manufacturing capabilities. Under these circumstances, China decided to copy the Soviet MiG-21 fighter, later known as the J-7. In 1961, China and the Soviet Union signed an agreement granting China a manufacturing license for the MiG-21F-13 fighter and the R-11F-300 engine. Subsequently, Xinyang Aircraft Manufacturing Factory started the research and development of J-7, and after efforts, the first J-7 made its maiden flight successfully in Xinfei on 17 January 1966, which marked China's successful development of the first type of twice-sound speed fighter and also was the turning model of the domestic fighters, weaponry changing from gun-based to missile-based. The successful development of J-7 not only enhanced China's fighter manufacturing capability, but also laid a solid foundation for the development of China's aviation industry. If you only look at the picture, you will feel that the J-7 is very big, but in fact its length is only 15 meters, and after removing the airspeed tube, it is only 13.9 meters, which is even smaller than the F-16. The first generation of J-7 exposed a lot of problems. The MiG-21 has an old problem, that is, when approaching the speed of sound, the aircraft will automatically dive. The air resistance will suddenly increase, which is a common problem of swept-back wing fighters. In order to improve aircraft performance, designers continue to increase the wing's swept-back angle, but this in turn leads to the wing tip part of the wing is easy to stall. The wing's own elastic deformation is more serious. To address this problem, Europe and the United States used leading-edge flap designs, while the Soviet Union used wing blade designs to mitigate it but the Soviet wing blade still didn't work. Its subsonic medium and low altitude acceleration and hovering performance was poor, which could not meet the Chinese Air Force's demand for maneuver flight and seizure of air control. Secondly, the first generation J-7 had quality problems, mainly due to substandard copying process, such as poor engine quality and easy bursting of the cockpit cover. Its combat effectiveness was low, with no full-featured radar, difficult targeting and low missile hit rate. Finally, there was also a gap in its technical performance, compared with American and other home-made fighters of the time. In subsequent versions of the J-7, the designers redesigned the wings and adopted more advanced wing shapes and layouts to improve the aerodynamic performance and stability of the aircraft. These improvements include adjusting parameters such as the wing's swept-back angle, wing span and cord length as well as optimizing the way the wing is attached to the fuselage. In addition to improving the wing design, China has also adopted other aerodynamic layout solutions to solve the wing blade problem. For example, in models such as the J-7E, a double delta wing design was adopted, which can effectively improve the aircraft's low and medium altitude maneuverability and also help to slow down the airflow separation phenomenon and improve the aircraft's stability. In this way, the J-7 slowly became reliable and a very practical fighter. In 1980, Egypt visited Beijing and signed the first order with China, purchasing 60 J-7s at one time. This order brought a lot of foreign exchange to China, with a total value of about more than 100 million US dollars, which is equivalent to 750 million US dollars nowadays. Then, North Korea, Pakistan, Jordan, Bangladesh, Sri Lanka, Iran, and a host of other countries bought improved J-7, as produced by China. There is a more desperate thing, in 1987, the United States bought 16 J-7 from China, good thing at that time. The relationship between China and the Soviet Union tends to ease, the big brother's life is coming to an end, did not pursue this matter. The US did not buy the J-7 to equip its troops. At that time, the US had better F-15s on hand, and even the F-16, S had better combat performance than the J-7S. Obviously, the motive of the U.S. was impure. At that time, there were many countries in the socialist camp, equipped with the MiG-21, an aircraft that the USS are exported more than 10,000, and 52 countries around the globe bought it, and it also set a record in fighting against more advanced fighters. So the U.S. bought the J-7 to study the MiG-21, to use its own fighters to simulate confrontation with it, and find out the shortcomings of the MiG-21. So how does the U.S. rate the J-7? From the manufacturing point of view, the Americans scoffed at it because J-7 is very compact. It is inconvenient for American experts to maintain it, and it takes six to seven engineers half a day to dismantle the engine. 
In the simulation of confrontation, American F-5E fighters are often helpless in the face of J-7's rapid approach. While a four-attack aircraft and J-7 can't fight against it at all, and only F-16 can fight with it. In the end, the U.S. military concluded that the aircraft was well-designed, but the fire control and radar were backward. Because the J-7 adopts nose air intake, the radar improvement is unlikely, so it can only be so. Currently, the Chinese Air Force still has 100 J-7s in service and a total of 1,577 aircraft were produced until 2013, when the J-20 came out. The decommissioned J-7S have been sealed away, and may come in handy in the future when needed.